Are you looking for a faster video? Well, today it's a live stream and I know you're probably looking for a really nice and tidy edited down video, but I have ways for you to make it faster. You can click that little gear on the YouTube settings right there on the video and adjust the playback speed. Make me sound like a chipmunk and it'll go a lot faster. You can also look and see if there's timestamps for this project in the description. And if you're on a desktop, you can hover over the time bar at the bottom of the screen and see if it's chunked up into chapters. And then that way you can go directly to the step you're looking for. And lastly, you can also tap on the screen on the right hand side of the video picture or on the left hand side to make the video jump ahead forward or backward if you're on a mobile device. And you can adjust that amount in your settings so you can have complete control over how much it jumps. So if you are on a desktop, you can use the fast forward or the rewind and that will make it fast go faster as well. You can also enable subtitles and the little CC on the screen will enable closed captioning. That way, if I am a little bit harder to understand with that double playback speed, the subtitles might help you out. All right, well, I know that it's not a nice little edited video, but if you sew with me, we'll get there together and it'll be lots of fun. And now for the live stream. Happy sewing. Hello, hello, how are you? Nice to see you. I can tell I can already need to brighten this up a little bit. Do you guys have a good weekend? Did you guys like the, the stream with Jen yet last week? That was so fun. Um, let's see. I think what I'm gonna do is this, then this. Is that too bright? That's too bright. Mm, that's a little too bright. Let's see. Uh, <laughs> it's like, okay, which, which is the worst of the two? Let's do the sharpness up a little bit. This makes my hands look terrible, but hey. <laughs> How are you? Hi, Kira. Hey, Adriana. Hey, Louisa. Hey, Dolan. Hey, Anna. There's a lot of you here. Hey, Malin. Hey, Karen. Oh, I'm glad you can make it too. Hi, BJ. Hey, Blair. Hey, Shasha. How's it going? All right. Is anyone, did anyone make the PJ bottoms since we last saw each other? I'm glad to finally make my complete set of pajamas. I did not cheat and take these home and we use them. Hey, Heidi. You made it. <laughs> Welcome. So this was the one of, one of the Caroline pajama tops I've made. And it's practically brand new. I will admit, I just don't wear it because I don't sleep in shirts like this. And so my idea this time is I'm going to make it a little bigger. I'm going to make it short sleeved and um, I will be able to wear it over things. You know what I mean? Yeah, right, Mullen? It was so fun. Hey, Sandy. Welcome. Hey, Beth. Oh, nice. Yeah, I feel like this is a legendary pattern. Um, the Carolyn pajama pajama set. We made the pants earlier in the month and they are linked in the description if you want to check those out or if you're still wanting to sew those. And I really love how mine came out. So this is, and we, we added a little piping. Thanks to someone for reminding me of that. And then the, ooh, I don't want to lose my pattern pieces here because they are tissue. And then the bottom. So I, uh, this is a needle sharp subscription box and they provided this project for me to sew with you guys. Uh, and you get everything you need in one of these boxes. I was a subscriber for a year when I first started my live stream and I loved it. It was really great to just get the whole project and you get everything down to the machine needle pattern. You know, there's a label, uh, a treat, everything, all the notions. Um, I am adding this piping to this. You don't need the piping to make these. This set right here, I didn't put piping or cord inside. It is flat. Can you see that? It's flat. This is going to be piping and it's vintage, like it's old piping. Make sure you pre-wash it if you use it. Even if you just use binding with no cord in there, pre-wash it. Just trust me on that one. Um, I have not pre-washed stuff like that before and it's really come to bite me. So, <laughs> not in a good way. So, 
New Carolyn Bottoms, yeah, exactly. You finished your pants with the rise adjustment. We're waiting to hem them because I'm not sure if I want to bother with the cuffs, yeah. Did you cut the cuff version or the non one? Oh, nice, you made, yeah, I considered making the shorts version, but I have so much fabric, I want to make the pants. Oh, yeah, I imagine cuffs on the shorts would be, I mean, cute, but sitting on them or sleeping in them, I don't know, you can't really see them, but there, there is a little bit of piping in these. Maybe, maybe not with the cord. Hey, Leah, how's it going? All right, well, let's get to it. So here's mine. This is, I, I know this, I think a lot of people have found me because of this particular live stream when I sewed this and doing this collar. I know it can be a little confusing, but um, it won't be hard, I promise. We're, we're gonna get through it together and it will all make sense. It will be awesome. Oh, that sounds nice, Karen. Are you gonna dye them before, the fabric before, or are you gonna dye the pajamas after? Because it's kind of a different effect, isn't it? I know if I put that there, I'm not gonna see my, I put my little binder there. Oh, cool, Adriana, nice. All right. These are so cute, I can't wait to wear these. All right, I'm gonna put those there too. So I pulled out my pattern pieces. They had been, um, you know, haven't been used them in a while. I'm making this short sleeve version. Ooh, these are, this is very light. Let's get some contrast for you guys so that you can see what I'm showing you here. So I, I am going to make my shirt bigger than that one. And so what I did, because these pieces were already cut out, is I added to this whole side here. So you can see I went out a half inch at the shoulder right here, boop, right there. And then I went three quarters of an inch out here. I actually, there's a, there's a little bit of uh, shaping here in the waist and I flattened that out a little bit because of my, my waist being a little bigger now. And then I also went out three quarters. Actually, I decided to mimic the waist. So I went inch, inch, three quarters. I did the same on the front so that they match. And then on the sleeve, I did this at the underarm only. I could have widened this cap a little bit to stay in line with the grading of going up a size, but I'm not too worried about that. Um, and that didn't affect any other pieces, so Basically, I just sort of simply graded up a couple sizes just in circumference. And sometimes I really like using a larger size that doesn't change in length and in other areas because maybe like all those other areas that I used to be a size 12 or whatever, they're, you know, I'm still that, like f the frame of my body is still that person, right? I just need more room. And so I'll just grade out sort of. So that is what you're going to be seeing on my pattern pieces there and i've never made the short sleeve with the cuff so my cuff piece i just made to match my sleeve and um you won't see that white on there so mostly lurking hi elena how's it going lurk away hey danny you might dye them after yeah that's cool <laughs> I have some linen I need to dye. I have a lot of linen I need to dye. And yeah, it's just not my thing that I do. Hey, Shim. Oh, no worries. No, you never need to <laughs> apologize. I'm not that fast. I'm not that fast. <laughs> oh, you have the stuff you have the watch. See, that's what I should do. I should get over this. I need to, this is the year I dye some of my linen because I bought the linen to make a linen, well, I don't wanna call it a quilt, but basically a quilt without batting. I really want, I, I like weight on me when I sleep, but it's so hot here in the summer um, that I actually use a down comforter still and it's not a good thing. Um, but I have this really cool thing that blows cool air under my mattress or my, my sheets and so that helps it. <laughs> 
So um, what I would like is a linen duvet that was without a, anything inside the duvet or like a linen quilt. And I was going to dye it. And then I was like, why am I taking all this on? <laughs> I don't know anything about dyeing. <laughs> I know enough to know I don't know enough. <laughs> hey, Claire. You have a four inch difference between high bust and full bust. Do you think I'd get away without doing FBA? Ooh, I do not know. Do you usually have to do an FBA on your makes? And have you made any closet core patterns? So a bedspread. Yeah, but um, it doesn't go down to the floor. Like basically a quilt without, without the batting inside. And I still wanted to like, I, what I thought would be really cool was to quilt it in polyester, then dye it, and then the, the thread wouldn't die. It's amazing, Leah. Ask me about it anytime. It's nicknamed the elephant. I love the thing. I love, love, love it. I got it when it was on clearance and it, I 100% recommend. It also warms your bed, but I never need that. In fact, I just take it off during the winter. I like being cool when I sleep, so. All right, let's do this. Okay, let me stop staring away. All right, so I've got my cuff. We've got collar pieces facing. Um, this is the pocket in two pieces because we're going to do a little bit of piping there. Facing. What? Wait, wait, wait. Oh, this is the button guide. We don't need to cut that out. I'm like, that's two facing. I don't need two facings. We just need this right here. Oh, that does sound familiar, Holland. Hi, Darlene. This is your first time and you're also a channel member? Wow. Thanks for joining, Darlene. If you need any help trying to understand how live streams work, just let us know. <laughs> but welcome, welcome. You see something, the process on, on what? Oh, on the dying? Oh, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm the last person. Although my joke about people like who are content creators like me or people who, um, I don't know, do whatever I'm doing, <laughs> I feel like they, they uh, will grow a lot more because when they're beginners. So maybe that would be a good thing for my channel. <laughs> All right, so here's the back. And the back is on the fold. I don't like flipping my piece over, but I'm going to. <laughs> yes, yes, mama, you mean yes, ma'am. <laughs> All right. So I, I'm not sure I'm gonna cut this right here. I just wanna see what I have going on over here. I don't usually, like something on the fold, I don't usually cut in the middle of the fabric and leave all this unless I can really fill it in good. You know what I mean? Because I just feel like, um, what if I can't and then I have a hole in the middle of my fabric there? Let's see, what do we got? What do we have? Is this, oh, this goes the other way. Hmm. Hmm. I think we might be refolding a little bit. Just because I have a lot of fabric doesn't mean I use it willy nilly, right? I have to admit, I have not used tissue pattern pieces in so long and they are so fiddly. I feel like I'm hurting butterflies, you know what I mean? Like, they're just flying all over the place and they're so light and, I'm, and this is exactly, oh, that reminds me, I did have something fall on my, ta on my <laughs> table yesterday and I really gotta get it because it's, um, yeah, I gotta get that thing. I can't forget it's there. I'll find it six months from now and go, oh. <laughs> All right, I need to get rid of this thing. I don't like that YouTube's like, now would be a good time to play an ad. I'm like, I've just started 14 minutes ago. All right. Hey, Marie, how's it going? You adjusted the pattern for your daughter's nightgown and had enough of the nutcracker fabric to cut it out again. <laughs> oh, meltdowns. Meltdowns are very distracting. That is for sure. 
And it's the epitome of, ah, now where was I <laughs> afterward? <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like, they're just like literally little butterflies flying all over the place. Anytime I move anything, I'm so scared I'm gonna lose it something. When she said, oh, you don't need a pattern. Do you need a pattern? And I was like, no, I don't. And then I was like, God, I really kind of trashed my pattern. And it's so wrinkly. But, you know, this is going to work. Except I have this big chunk out right there. We'll get that like that. I'm also going to keep it the original length. Mine I shortened. And I think I'm just going to go full on long, you know? You guys are talking so much, I love it. I When I saw the chat, when we did the Jen chat, when like Jen and I were talking on Thursday and I saw my chat flying, I was like, I hope you guys remember what you asked and asked me again later because it was just really fast. I've been in lots of live streams where chat's flying and I actually have to hide it. <laughs> Because I'm just a viewer and I'm overwhelmed. I'm like, oh my goodness, how does that streamer do it? All right, so that gives me this bigger piece over here. I could probably even get a whole front if I wanted. So we're just going to cut out this back. Let's just cut this off. It'd be nice to see the length without alterations. I don't think I shortened it that much. It's pretty long, though. And I, I will see if I keep it this length, but I'm going to cut it this length and um, see what I think before trimming it down this time. Because this one right here, these types of things do tend to be a little long on me. I'm not that tall. So this one measures, yeah, I shortened it like four inches, like that, five inches. This is hem, so it would be like right here. So like four inches. It's quite a bit different. Four inches longer is, it is more pajama-ish. Do I ever go back and read what? Oh, the chat? Oh, did I? No, I did not. I never go back and read the chat. Are you disappointed in me? <laughs> I did go back and start the stream because I was curious about some of the technical things we were trying to work on and the fact that you could hear Jen but not me. That was so such a weird quirk. I don't even know where to begin with fixing that. So we'll just learn to not talk when we go when I go live or something. And it was just it was it just super weird that you could hear her not me when it was my stream, on, on my stream, I would, I would imagine more that you would be able to hear me and not her if there was gonna be a quirk at all. So, all right, let's get this. Do you need to measure the pattern top to see if it's long enough for you? I've made this before a few times and that's why I had shortened it previously this time I'm leaving it the full length and I'm doing that mainly because I am sorry I'm looking so disorganized. This tissue's really throwing me off. Um, I think like I'm kind of going for more of an overshirt style pajama top so that I can maybe wear like a little tank top underneath it and then right before bed just take off the overshirt. You know what I mean? Yeah, Jen wasn't muted, but neither was I. We were chatting back and forth. I was not muted. <laughs> it was so weird. Hey, Aussie she Chick, how's it going? Where's Raquel? Hey, Raquel, how's it going? All right. Uh, my sleeve is a little wide for this spot, but look at that. It's not too wide for that spot, so I could do two sleeves there, right here. I cannot do two cuffs, can I? No. Cannot do that. I could do my pocket. I can do 
cut to under collar. Oh yeah, we can do that. <laughs> That's great, Marie. Nah, I, I really do not think that it was anything on her end. I think that we were doing something, we were kind of bending the, um, not rules, but we were, we were definitely jumping through some hoops to get that thing, get what we did to work. It sounds like that would be so easy just to be like, oh, we're gonna have side-by-side -side people. And you know, we see that with newscasters all the time, right? But we aren't newscasters. For us to simultaneous stream on two separate channels, the same thing, is, um, isn't very common. Like when you start looking around, you might see people record that way, that's a lot easier, but streaming is different. And so her microphone was set up in a, a really unique way that, um, but we fixed that. Like we, it wasn't like wrong. She just uses her microphone differently than I do. I don't wanna bore you guys with all that stuff. <laughs> I, I find it interesting, but then again, I'm like, ah, <laughs> you know? All right, this is the, um, this pocket is so similar. The larger one is the pocket, this one's the cuff. And um, if I put the notch, which I just noticed, I forgot their notches are really subtle. I won't even need this piece because I'll see the, the notch there and I'll know to turn it like that, right? Hey Sue, how's it going? Hey, Aisha, I didn't see her, but I see you saying, oh yeah, I see there now. I saw someone say hi to you, Aisha. <laughs> this is uh, kind of the worst cutting I'm doing here. Let's see, let's go like this. My edge of my pattern piece, it's a little raggedy. Uh, you can see it on this one for sure. So we'll just use my ruler instead. And I'll probably double check that this piece is square before I sew. Like I said, I already notched this, but I am gonna just pin all these together so I don't lose these pieces or think they're scrap. <laughs> yeah, that age is not, definitely not. <laughs> and it's almost like, um, you know, they know Okay, let's see. If you have a directional print, this is the under collar. I would probably, hmm, it's gonna be like this. I, I, I don't think it's gonna matter either way, honestly, because the, they put the grain line like this. So I was gonna give you a suggestion, but I wouldn't sweat it. I would do it however it fits, you know. Let's move this a little closer to me. My poor little pattern. I have made this enough, it's funny, I've made this pattern enough times that I really should by now have transferred it to a different paper. The other couple of times I've made it, I, I altered the pattern and I did change the pattern pieces and I have those separate they are not these pieces. This is really my only second time doing these um, in the way that they were intended. All right, here, we're gonna keep these pieces and we are going to notch. There is a drill hole right here. It's not a drill hole, don't drill it. Um, you have a, a little, um, what do you call this? A little dot here and you have a dot there. So keep those. Basically, it's a dot on the um, seam line, so it's not total rocket science. It is a little bit more straightforward than it seems. <clears throat> oh, I have a whole skill building session on that, BJ. If you truly are interested in it, it's um, in the guild. If, <sighs> I don't know if it's for sale on my website. Let me check really quick. But I did a whole skill building session on, on that, on uh, matching plaids, prints, um, stripes, anything like that. 
Now it's not on my website right yet, but it is in the guild if you're interested. I'm going to cut this off and cut two. No, nah, we'll just, we're gonna do this. We're gonna save that piece maybe for a sleeve later. When cutting a normal button under collar, you cut the under collar to have the print in the direction when popped up or when folded over and it's normal, whatever you want. That's why I didn't make a suggestion. This isn't a um, collar you would pop up. Yeah, sure, BJ. Yeah, if you want more information about it, I can tell you. I don't, I've, I'm kind of shy about marketing myself. So. <laughs> yeah, but it is a pretty good, I feel like it was a really, it turned out really good, that, that skill building session. <clears throat> Um, I think that, um, that would be a personal call for sure, Shim, as far as which way you want your print to match. Like for me, there's all kinds of, you know, this is the collar, right? So this is the top collar and this is the way it's going to look like this. This is the center back. It's actually going to line up like this and then like come around the front. This is how it'll look. So technically this right here is the, the way the collar is gonna be on the body, right? So do you want the print right side up as looking at it on the center back right here and on the fold? Or would you like it right here, right? So there's a lot of things to think about there. And if you were doing a collar that pops, then you have another layer to think about. Okay, Danny. <laughs> Anna, <laughs> welcome. <laughs> oh, thanks, BJ. Yeah, I don't know. I have trouble with that. I just don't. Like I'm totally perfectly comfortable with my skill set, but I just feel like everyone's inundated with stuff and it's like, oh, <laughs> you know, I could take a leaf out of Jen's book. She's so good at mentioning it. All right. So let's get this. I'm kind of avoiding some wrinkles you probably can't see because I feel like if there's already wrinkles in the fabric from when it was laundered. You know, those things can be a little bit uh, stubborn, you know? So I'm just kind of like, eh, I'm not iron I'm ironing my pajamas, right? <laughs> I don't want to iron my pajamas. I'm already a little mad when I feel compelled to iron my napkins that I made. In fact, if I have to, if I feel that way enough, I don't actually iron them unless I'm having guests, I will take apart the napkin. I take it apart, I iron it really, really good, both layers, and then I trim it to fit and re-sew it together. Like I will go to too, way too much trouble because it's such a pet peeve to have crumpled napkins. Because some of them are awesome and some of them are just a, just a mess, you know? And I really like cloth napkins. They're not fancy either, but they are everyday stuff. So, you know, every day I get a little irritated. <laughs> um, no, I, that is a good idea, Marie. I did not do that, but I was talking a bit ago about how my pat pattern is definitely seeing um, some wear, you know, and crumpledness. Um, it wasn't actually stuffed in the envelope, but it was stuffed into a bigger envelope. Um, at the beginning, I explained that what I'm doing here is this was my original cut line, which you, I'm sure cannot see right here. So the one I showed you at the beginning was made on this cut line. And I don't ever wear that pajama shirt, it's practically brand new. And so I was thinking like, I, what it would take for me to wear it more is if it were just looser and boxier. And so I decided to 
add three quarters of an inch at the underarm and the bust line. Kind of, I, all I'm doing is giving myself more circumference. So I gave myself more here as well because I don't like being, um, I just don't like my shoulders to be con like constricted at all in my armhole. So instead of going up in size completely, all I did was go up in size in circumference. And so I added three quarters of an inch here one inch, one inch, and I did that to the front and the back, and I added a half inch at the shoulder and went out. And it does make this edge nice and easy to cut, right? <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna get my, um, I'm gonna get my little Hira marker out, just a second. That's the little thing I like to mark pockets with. I probably should use, probably should use my other thing, because. <laughs> That's awesome, Adriana. So right here, I'm just going to use this. Mm, I'm going to leave that there. I'm going to actually just move this up a little bit, though, like that. And I'm just going to mark it like this. Let's see, what size is my pocket? <laughs> I don't even know. What size line is that? <sighs> oh, okay, I see, I see. Okay, there it is. It's this one here. Oh, I can actually see where I marked it last time. Okay, I have a reference then right here and right here. Hopefully that'll be there tomorrow. Yeah, no problem. I know everyone doesn't get here at the same time. Um, I'm going to, do I want to mark this? I'm gonna just pin it right here. There's a circle there. I'm just gonna pin both sides. Not sure I'll need that, but it'll be helpful. And then the center front is marked and that's about it. I don't need this piece for anything else. Yeah, this edge is really nice. I was just saying like, I think that I've made this enough that transferring it to another paper would probably be a good idea, you know? <laughs> okay, so now we have still this. Are we gonna get lucky? Will this fit there? Oh. <laughs> I'm glad he like like enjoyed it, you know? Like, I don't know if enjoy is the right word, but he was intrigued enough. I do know what I'm doing. I do not mind tooting my own horn about that. <laughs> I just love what I do a lot. I know the sun is like, well, it's, it's not sunny today, but it was sunny yesterday. All the Californians are like, yay, the sun. <laughs> I used to live somewhere in California where it wasn't very sunny. We got about, I think it was 60 days of sun a year. Here, we get 300 days of sun a year. You know, it's like a, the opposite. I love it. It didn't really bug me too much because those years living on the coast kind of hardened me to that. Iron your pattern pieces to non-fusible. Oh, yeah. Wait, iron them to non-fusible woven. Iron your pieces to non-fusible woven. How, do they stick to non-fusible woven? Right, Adriana? I know, it's like so satisfying. I don't think some people out, I think this is one of the things that like 
normal people out in the world, you know, the people that, not normal, the abnormal people out in the world who don't sew, <laughs> they are missing out on this sensation of getting something to fit perfectly. You know? You said, you said iron your pieces to non-woven -wo feasible. You, you, that's what you said. Non-woven that is fusible? Wait, oh, I'm understanding this. Non-woven, yeah, okay. <laughs> I don't know why, but I was not computing that that way. I'm so sorry. You're right, you're right. Non-woven fusible. Yeah, so fusible interfacing. Uh, but just like, like basically like, yeah, the not the fabric stuff. I do not know why I was misunderstanding that. <laughs> Do you ever have those moments where you're explaining, like talking with somebody and one or the other of you, whichever one it is in that moment, is not under, like they're, you know, like they know what you're saying, but they're, they're thinking of a completely different meaning for one of the words. And it's so aggravating because you're like, all right, we are in a spot where I can't, actually can't change what they're thinking because they're thinking, I know they know this, but they're just, they're just, for some reason, swapping the meaning of this word for something. Yeah. Like old-fashioned palette. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Thanks, Mullen, for the link to the guild. Oh, can the glue go through the tissue? Okay. Uh, this needs interfacing. Okay. Thanks for coming out of lurk mode to tell me that, Alina. <laughs> there goes my highly intelligent badge. <laughs> Yo, I'm reading chat and cutting something out. Back off. <laughs> Come on, Kira, be on my side here. <laughs> it, it all, it, sometimes it bites me in the butt, Darlene, but um, I definitely do, do that. There are some times when I know I'm low on fabric where I'm like, mm, I should probably take a look at this and see how it's going to fit, you know? Because you just never know. Like I need one of these on the fold, but it doesn't need to be on the fold um, in the middle of my fabric. These are all the funny pieces here. I need two of these. Um, this is also the size. I have some scraps over here. What is this right here? Oh, this is like center scraps. Let's see here. I'm just checking the grain. None of these are going to fit. This would have fit my facing good. And so there I kind of went wrong. I could have put my facing on this one here and then used that fold for maybe something. This right here will fit on the fold. So that's a potential. So we'll do this then. All right, and then that's everything. That's awesome, Beth. I'm really glad that you're liking the guild. This is really a, a great place. You could just use woven too. Uh, yeah, if you wanted to trace your pieces, Yeah, maybe, yeah, you probably had some good glue, Elena. Well, and you know what? Do you think I could do this with my, my, um, hi, Barbara. Um, yeah, I'm wondering too, Aisha, like I have so much of that. What if I, do you think I would get that kind of uh, cottage cheese effect or cellulite effect on those? I'm going to do a, a, a trial. This piece right here needs to be ironed, man. It's never been cut out. So I'm doing the short sleeve, but I have room for a long sleeve there. Wish I would have ironed this piece. My iron is at one, one strength right now, and it is, it is called hot. <laughs> it is adjustable, but I just don't adjust it down.
Yeah, I'm wondering, yeah, exactly, Libby. Oh, that's great, Adriana. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking too. I should like, I'm not washing it, so that actually could be a really good use for that stuff. That stuff. <laughs> I have it in black and white too. Maybe the using black would be a really nice background to the tissue. Hmm. The white could be a good background too, I guess. Yeah, we've been having, I, I think that is a good plan, Kira, especially if you're not planning on washing the bag. I used to love that stuff, but lately I am getting this crazy um, amount of, of um, you know, like it's t changing the texture once it gets laundered, which really actually makes me heated. <laughs> Because my the first thing I made at the beginning of last year was a dress, and I loved it. I still love it. Uh, but the uh, interfacing ruined part of it, a major part of it. <clears throat> and someday I will just take apart the dress and replace the yoke. But it just still kind of makes me mad, you know? All right. Put our notches in. Five eighths inch seams. I'm thinking I'm going to flat fell the seams on the armhole on the side seam. I think that that would be a nice finish instead of French seams because it'll be lower profile and a little more comfortable. I don't know. I don't. Let's see. I I, I know. You just never know. Sometimes. Sometimes. No, it's about the same. Yeah, I have a lot of that. Uh, fold is this way, yeah. Yeah, exactly, Aisha. Okay. When um, if you're one of the uh, if you're if you're someone who is a little concerned about sewing the collar and the neckline on this particular pattern, um, one thing I think you need to do right off the bat is make sure you cut the neckline, the facing, and the collar precisely. If uh, your fabric's really wrinkly, iron out your fabric, then cut those pieces. Because little things like an eighth of an inch different on any of those does kind of give, your, give you a little trouble. It kind of hassles you while you're sewing. And if you just don't like those kinds of little finicky sewing things, that is one of the biggest gifts you can give yourself is just making sure. I know we all are planning on being accurate when we cut things out anyway. But that is one where I think you just, just make, absolutely make sure. Boy, I can't even see. This is just one gigantic lump of notch. <laughs> I'm gonna do the center back. And, I don't know, where, which one? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Mm, let's see. One, I think I'm gonna assume it's, oh God. How many sizes were above mine? Not very many, right? I have the old version. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Hmm, this doesn't even look like the line I should be cutting on. Oh yeah, I can see it actually, okay. Right here, we'll carve this away a little better. Hard to be accurate if you don't even know where to cut. One, two, three, four. <clears throat> Their notch is so thick that it's, it's hard to be precise with it. All right. 
<laughs> well, I don't know why I'm saving that. There's no way I'll use that. Most likely not. Let's see what we got here. All right, let's put the fabric away here. Well, we'll put that at the end. I always make you guys clean up with me. I have a pretty small space. Well, for me, I have a small space. I know it's a great large space. Um, let's see what we got. We got, this needs to be an interfacing and so does that piece there. We have our back. This is just a button guide. We have the sleeve and the cuff. We'll put these two together. Sleeve and cuff. I'm just pulling out my pattern pieces so they're not in the way. We have the front. So the first thing we'll probably sew is the pocket. So we're gonna put that. I like to stack my pieces in the order I'm gonna sew them. We have our pocket. This right here is also a collar. Pattern pieces. All right, and let's look at the directions real quick. Yeah, that's exactly what I did, Aisha. All right, let's see. Yeah, we're gonna do the pocket. We're gonna prep our collar. So I'm gonna put this upside down and then put that there. And then I'll need to add those two pieces there. We also did the shoulders by then. So we'll do that, then the collar, um, and then all that's left is really that and the sleeves. Okay, cool. So let's cut the interfacing pieces out here. This looks like a fusible Trico. Thank you, Sew Needle Sharp, for having Trico. <laughs> I trust it so much more. Okay, maybe it goes this way. I, I, I think if I had to pick a job, an imaginary job that doesn't even really exist in the, in the sewing world, um, it, or like maybe it was like a torture, it would be cutting interfacing. I hate how it grabs my hands. I hate everything about it. Can I get this on here? Yeah. And then we have room for our collar right here. Barely there, okay. It would be kind of fun to come up with imaginary sewing jobs. <laughs> What's an imaginary sewing job you would absolutely love if you could do it eight hours a day? Do you guys have something like, is there a part of the process of cutting or sewing that you just love? And you can't say, you can't say wearing it around town. That's cheating. Trying to think, what would mine be? Hmm. Well, I do love removing basting stitches. I actually don't like doing it, but I like it when you get one side of your basting stitches done and you get to pull the other one. If that could be my job, I would like that. That's very, very satisfying. If, if Ray was here, she would concur. We love that. We love that sensation. Get rid of this and we're going to iron these in a second. Fly zipper, bobbin wind. Oh, these are things you love. Top stitching. You love winding a bobbin. That is actually, I kind of I get that. I kind of get that. Doing a zipper fly, you'd love to just do what zipper flies. Those are super satisfying. Top stitching, <clears throat> surging. Oh, Jan, yeah. Oh, okay, I like this. I'm learning a little bit about you guys. <laughs> I 
Yeah, the loop turning thing. Yeah. I can, uh, let's see if I can get this better if I open it up like this. <laughs> All right, Nancy. Pressing seams, that's good. I told you that was cheating, Elena. No cheating answers. <laughs> but yeah, that's true. Get that. Interfacing doesn't really have a grain line unless it's woven. So I'm going to tilt that a little bit. Ironing and pressing. You're surging at your job as you speak, Sarah. I love it. Oh, so Marie, it has yet to be revealed to you. I like this. Gathering and watching the fabric pull together and the man's going, oh, oh, I thought you were going to say you like that. Yeah, that is, I don't really like either of those tasks. <laughs> we could, I know, we're, we're getting the spectrum, Aisha. We're getting the spectrum right now. I, maybe I'm interviewing all of you. Oh, nice, Danny. Welcome back. <laughs> so you are all, you are a product sewist for sure, Elena. I wonder how many things would never get done. I wanted to say part of my favorite process is cutting out, but I feel like you guys won't believe me if I say that, <laughs> but it really is. I really do like cutting stuff out. Yeah, see, I just doesn't like cutting the fabric. All right, let's go to the iron. And we'll um, iron this. Let me put my chat on my phone. I have to say, you guys, I am still struggling with my iron being very naughty and like this whole thing here is, you can't really see, look at how much it's burned. I have, this is my antique trivet upside down. There's the original silicone thing. And um, it just, it makes me very nervous. Um, okay, make sure I have this, this is nice and sticky. That's true, every step is a means to an end. I keep getting ads. <laughs> Picking pins from the floor with the magnet. Oh, that, that actually is pretty satisfying. You like, oh, nice to see you, Diane. I hope your husband's doing good. Stitching piece together, any piece, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay, Adriana. So, okay, good, so now we have a shopper. That's good, because I don't like the shopping part. <laughs> I know it sounds crazy, but I just don't. It takes too much time. I feel like uh, my style would be a lot better if I spent more time on the shopping part. <laughs> you know? <laughs> okay. Pulling apart my pins here. And what I'm going to do is put this face up. Trimming seams and pressing seams. You like doing that? We have a lot of ironers. We're gonna have, a, the, our iron game is gonna be strong. Hand stitch buttonholes. I think we're talking another level of dedication. Yeah, I, I will do the cutting part. I love the cutting part. Because it's it's the it's like the pattern part of the whole thing, you know. It's the designing part for me. That's the way I look at it now. I used to hate it. I don't hate it anymore. Tomorrow is a surgery. Okay. I am sure it's going to go really really well, Diane. I'm thinking of about you guys. All right. There's one. There's my pinhole. 
Yay, that's hot. Okay. I like uh, ironing my stuff right side up, but you don't have to do that. It's not a right or wrong thing. It is a preference thing. I'm sure I don't make it look appealing either. It's kind of fiddly to do it this way. <laughs> it's really, I think, is born from when we didn't have woven interfacing. We only had the cheap stuff that Libby mentioned earlier. I There's a texture thing about ironing that stuff that I, really sets my teeth on edge. I do not like ironing non-woven fusible interfacing. I don't even use this stuff. It's just a carryover. So it's just a weird thing. I have some weird quirks, you know. Okay, let's make that hole a little more prominent. Iron this a little bit. Find that hole again. There we go. All right. There is no fix, Libby. <laughs> I'm still struggling with it. This is what I have going on right now. It is not my fix. In case you guys don't know, I have fallen in love with this iron, but this iron is heating up my table underneath. My idea right now is that I'm going to get an ironing uh, table. I'm not sure. So um, I recently got the space next door. I'm sharing the office next door with another person for storage and we got like a storage rate on it because there's so many empty offices here. And I'm going to pull out a lot of things in here to optimize what I do for recording video. And um, one of the things I think I'm going to do is bring my ironing board back into the situation here. And I'm wondering if I can put my iron on the, the rest of my ironing board because it has a built-in rest. We'll see. That's my current plan. Yes, yeah, just fabric, Raquel. That's what I always used. Okay, yeah, I, you, oh, oh, you, you like taping and cutting patterns. Oh, thank goodness, because you can have all that. All right, Kira, you're hired. <laughs> you love hand sewing, Smith, Mim, Smith, Smith. <laughs> yeah, good. There's a crew. We have a hand sewing crew. I love this. No, Adriana. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, someone has now, and Nancy, we're safe. We're safe. Someone's, someone's going to do that for us. Thank goodness. Yeah, the, the guy I'm sharing the office with is an architect, and so he does have a wide format um, printers. And he said, you know, I'll print your patterns out, but I'm always like, yeah, you know, I don't want to make someone do that. I don't really need... Yeah, I do need that. Well, we'll just keep it just in case. Uh, but now that he's going to be set up specifically, maybe I would take him up on that and pay for it. Be nice. I used to have a plotter, but I gave it away. I don't have the hasp key that goes to the back of the computer anymore. Like computers have gotten way more modern than my wide format plotter was. It was so old. <laughs> and I used to use it to print patterns out, ironically. But they weren't PDF, they didn't have PDF tape together patterns when I was doing that. That's the whole weird thing is that CAD came around and then, you know, as a pattern drafter, if I was freelance and I had a client that used CAD, and if I didn't have a plotter, I'd have to send it, my file somewhere and they would send me my plotted pattern to me. Um, and so I got a little blueprint plotter so I could test my patterns. I bought it used, it was like two th over $2,000. And then, um, yeah, and then I just, like, my computer aged out of it, and my my um, computer, right, my CAD program also aged out. I didn't re-up it because that's really expensive to have as well. And so um, I just finally donated or gave away the, the plotter. Enter the home sewing world, and I'm like, oh, my gosh, everyone's using PDF patterns here, but they're printing on a home printer. Crazy. Crazy how things kind of morph around. Some plotters print fast. Some do not, Elena. Yeah. 
Mine was fine. It was a little HP design jet. It was a really sought after little plotter because it kind of was like, did the best of all worlds, you know? <laughs> Nancy. <laughs> yep. What was the thing you liked to do, Nancy? What was your, what was your, uh... <laughs> it was pressing. You'll be in the pressing station. That's kind of close to the hand sewists, right? Because that's quality control. You may have to talk to them. <laughs> Yours prints fast. That's great. Do you have a tabletop one? Because now that they, they've come a long way. Like the thing I used to have was literally called a blueprint plotter. It wasn't like it is now. And uh, the other great thing about that was that if I, I'm pretty sure I've used a lot of plotters before, like working different places. One of my favorites <laughs> was if the, the cartridge ran out of ink, um, it was a pen plotter. You could just put a Bic pen. Remember Bic pens, the white pen with the little black tip where the, the ballpoint pen, a ballpoint pen. You could just put a ballpoint pen in the plotter and it worked great. And one of the junior developers that worked um, in my, like kind of in my department, he figured that out and I was like, oh yeah, you deserve a raise. This, it was great. Yo, you have an HP design jet. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, I, it wasn't, mine wasn't slow, but they can be really slow. Hi, Amelia, welcome. See, Adriana, I am not a big hand, into hand sewing, but I will hand weave a shank on a button to print maps. Yeah, exactly. A stand and net. Yeah, mine had a uh, stand with a and on wheels, and then it had a roll holder, and then it had a basket to catch the pattern. Yeah, it was great. I love that thing. It just wasn't compatible with my computer because it was so old. It used like an 18 pin key that <laughs> you plugged into my computer. <laughs> it's old. But I know you can still download the drivers for it and everything. And um, the person who took it was someone in the stream. So I'm hoping that, that she'll get it going one day and tell me that wasn't a waste to take it. <laughs> but I felt a little bad. I was like, you can have it if you want, but I don't know what it's going to do. I love the thing. Uh, and I think mine was black and white or color, but I only ever use black and white. All right, well, we're ready to sew. So tomorrow I'll be sewing part one of these. Look at that, it took an hour with me chatting. Super fast. If you don't know, I have this guild. I will promote myself a little bit because I feel like this, seeing that this took me an hour, I feel like this is a good place to say, this month I have free access to the Journeyist group and the Journeyist group has access to um, workshops which are like zooms and you can ask me anything there's you get two of those a month and there's four to pick from um, and then there's also the ask a soy question show and you also get skill building session and this month it's on cutting confidence because that seemed like the thing that people did, liked the, the least and I'll show you how I can just cut in an hour while reading chat Ooh, would these be a good beginner project? I, you know, AM, I would say no. And I don't want to say that because I'm trying to discourage you. Really what I'm saying is I want to, I want to guarantee your success in projects. And I feel like something like this, um, I'll put it to you this way. This is one of my, I've shown these before and it's one of my most viewed live streams because the color is a little, tricky to understand if you don't really understand what's happening. It's like, you know, some people learn by going, oh, I, I need to know what's happening here in order to know why I'm doing this. The caller on this kind of thing, there's 73 people here. Oh, wow, thanks for telling me, Libby. Hello, everyone. So I am a big fan of being really honest about skill levels on patterns. In fact, I just in, I kind of had a t chat with someone last week live about this because I don't know, they rate it a three out of five. You see these little diamonds? That's their, I don't know if you can see that, their rating system. I would say intermediate. Yeah, the bottoms in view A could be a good beginner project. You are still dealing with elastic and a casing. Yeah, I feel that's exactly it, Amelia. And I, I really, oh, thanks, Beverly. 
I really want people to take up sewing and and succeed. And so I think that um, looking for beginner appropriate things, and I, and I actually am first to say that I don't think people label their patterns accurately for beginners. So I don't know if that was very encouraging, AM, I'm sorry. The top can be pretty tricky. I'll be doing piping, but you could not do piping. Um, so anyway, I don't know. Do I think you can sew it together? Yeah. Do I think you'll like the results? I don't know. So you'll, you'll see me, you can watch me sew these this week and see what you think. I think that's the thing. Watch and see what you think of me sewing it together. Yes, I, I think so. I'm making a short sleeve version. Um, I'm not making sh a shorts version, but I did make the pants earlier in the month and they could have easily just been hemmed shorts. So yeah. You're, ch you're oh, you're ch tackling the bo bottoms, Margaret. Awesome. Oh, there, Elena has a tip for you, AM. She says their Rome collection patterns are better beginner patterns. That's great. Thanks, Elena. There is a short sleeve and shorts option. Exactly. Let's look at, this is probably a little easier to see on camera. Do you see? Mine is printed, misprinted, actually. So, yeah. This is view A and this is view B. B. They have it mismarked on mine. <laughs> I have a very old copy of this pattern. Uh, what else do I want to say? What have you sewn? I mean, if you want to talk about what you've sewn already, we could point you to in other ideas for patterns. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> All right, yeah, so I'm sewing starting tomorrow, same time, same place. It will be available for re-watching, and I hope you're joining in. I hope some of you are sewing these. Thanks, huge thanks to Needle Sharp for giving us this project, which is great. Holy hand-eye coordination. What do you mean? See you, Kira. Yeah, exactly, Nancy. Confident beginners. Well, I am confident. <laughs> I might be overconfident. <laughs> we do need better beginning projects than a pillowcase. I completely agree. I think like, you know what I think, um, I didn't, I should have discussed with the Jen, with this with Jen last week when I brought this up was, I think partly why s certain things get mislabeled also as beginning and intermediate is what are the trends in what we're wearing. So if we're wearing things that are very simple garments, then a lot of sewing patterns are going to be beginning. When I started sewing, clothes were a little bit more um, structured. There were set in sleeves and collars on all the shirts. There weren't a lot of knits to buy. There weren't a lot, a lot, not that you want to wear. They were all like baby clothes, you know, baby fabrics. And that, because those were the trends, like you kind of were forced to learn how to set a collar on, do princess seams, darts are a be a totally a beginner thing, and do a set in sleeve. And I think set in sleeves were always the breaking point for a lot of new sewists because you have to ease them in. Yeah, aprons are great, but how many aprons do you need? Oh yeah, no worries, Adrian. That's awesome though. Napkins, yeah. Pajama pants are great beginner patterns, but yeah, it, exactly. If it has the fold over waistband, I think it's a little simpler. Little drawstring bags. Yeah, non-wearable things are great beginner projects because you do you take away the quotient of fitting. Fitting is probably the most advanced thing in sewing. You know, that and beating your machine into submission. Did I cut out it? <gasps> Thank you, Shem. Let's cut out a gift bag. Yes. This is my, this is 2022's resolution. <laughs> 2022's resolution is that I'm going to cut a gift bag out with every project I sew from the scraps. This is great gift bag fabric. <laughs> Here we go. Let's pull it over here. Could actually use this a little better even. 
and then it'll be in the bin and I'll sew it. And by the end of the year, I'll have at least 12 new gift bags. That's my plan. See, this is it. This is what it takes. I need to make it a part of my routine and I'll start remembering, you know? It's kind of like any kind of new habit you want to create. You got to you got to do it for like a certain amount of time. Or, you know, you got to like a new food. You need to try it. What is it? Like 12 times in order to under to really ascertain if you like it or not. 2023 gift bag galore. I have still have some cut out from before too. Yeah, that's true. If you cut, you could, don't have to do the faux fly. Honestly, the faux fly is pretty easy. Saying the words faux fly is kind of fun. I feel like it's that shoe fly shoe. <laughs> uh. Okay. Thanks to Am for uh, probably triggering Shem's brain into reminding me to uh, cut out my gift bags. <laughs> yeah, exactly, Adriana, but it works. <laughs> That's right, Shem. Exactly. Okay, this is my heart's notches. I have a lot of notches on this bag pattern. Oh, we need a drawstring too. What was the, what was the drawstring casing measurement? Hmm. I don't remember the drawstring casing measurement. They did, they did work really good though. I'm gonna do it sideways. Do I have a pattern piece for that? I feel like I used a ruler. These are all my cut bags still. I do have extra lining. Oh, this is tiny. This is so tiny. <laughs> I would have guessed at this and it would have been completely different. Wait, was the quilt along? Go shizzle. You're doing the Omega. Oh, you're doing the Omega quilt along? Oh, cool. I love her patterns. Melody, Melody Miller. No, not Melody Miller. Um, Miss, Miss Make. <laughs> yeah, that. I uh, I like the Omega. I, I kind of wanted a little bit more, it to be more obvious that the distortion, but I, I like it a lot. All right, I'm just gonna pin that and put it in the bin. If we have time Saturday, we'll be sewing it up. I already have lining cut and I have drawstring pre-made. So thanks for the reminder, yay. <laughs> Off to a good start. <laughs> Although I could have done probably one for um, the pants too. We'll see. We'll see. All right. Well, I'll see you guys tomorrow and um, Saturday. So sewing part one tomorrow, sewing part two Saturday. Tomorrow, let's see. What do I think I'll get through? I'll probably do everything up to the collar, even though it's pretty early on. It's like actually one of the very first things. No, I'll probably do the collar tomorrow. Yeah, usually I like to keep the kind of the, the most technical part for Saturday, but we do it right off the bat, so I think um, we'll be doing that tomorrow, so. Mm -hmm. Hi, Mafio. <laughs> How are you? Happy New Year. Nice to see you. You are here for the end of the stream, but I'll be sewing tomorrow, so maybe we, maybe we can see you then, so. I know, right, Libby? Hi! <laughs> All right, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a great afternoon or evening, wherever you're at, or morning, if you're down under, and I'll see you Thursday and Saturday. Bye!